So my riders are still on strike. I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> uh, what are we doing today, Doc? Today, we've got a lot going on. So you guys know, a lot of you guys know that Ryan basically was working out here full time. And now that he's gone, I use John a few days a week. And then on Wednesdays, I'm trying to get everyone to come out so we can sort of focus all of our work and sort of work as a team and get a lot done. And plus I can put stuff on video. Uh, Anna, techie farm lady, shoot some funny Instagram stuff. If you haven't gone, go over the Instagram page and see what's on Instagram. We just do fun stuff over there. That's all we do. I've got to cut this. This is looking really good. I'll tell you about that. The new farm clearing area, I've got to put down seed over there. The backyard, I think I'm going to have the good witch real mow. She's used to real mowing. I'll have her real mow the backyard. Then we have to go up to the garden. we got to do garden work. I have to hook up my electric spreader. I got to put some annual ryegrass down on uh, down on that new spot over there. So, anyways, we're just a bunch of stuff going on. Here we go. So, in case you're wondering, this was this is seeded in common Bermuda, and it came in fairly well, being that this is mostly rocks and roots. <laughs> and then I came in with a contractor mix. The contractor mix is a mix of rye and fescues. So. As my Bermuda goes downhill and starts to taper off, this other cool season lawn hopefully will actually come up strong. Now yesterday, if you have a cool season lawn, you need to be putting a fast release nitrogen right now. Let me make that point again, I covered that before. If you have a cool season lawn, fescues, rise, whatever, fast release nitrogen. I'm using Green Shocker because it's so easy and fast, turns into a liquid as soon as you wet it, goes right in. So I put out some green shocker here yesterday. Let me hop over here. I'll give you an update here before we start all the work. People come. Okay, so this is the land clearing project over here. We did a whole bunch of seeding and it all started to germinate, came up great. We did clovers, we did turnips, we did grasses. And then for six weeks, we've had two tenths of an inch of rain, basically. I know other people have a worse drought, I get it, but we have a huge amount of time and money invested in all of our seeding projects. So we brought out the big irrigation 1250 that thing shoots 80 feet. We're running a high pressure pump out of the pond. We're watering this and we're watering one of the fields up here for the deer. So I have reseeded and then I'm gonna put some more seed. I'm getting some annual rye grass. It's cool enough that I can put that out. So I'm gonna hook up the electric spreader. I'll put out some, um, I'll put out some annual rye in here. And then I'm, I've got chicory coming in. I'm gonna put chicory up on the upper field and I'll be watering there. What else we got going? Oh, the backyard. So this is my arch enemy, the backyard. <laughs> this soil is horrible. It's absolutely horrible. Uh, it's full of wood chips. It's full of nasty clay stuff, but this is perennial rye now and it's starting to come up okay. I'll be watching this and I'm gonna keep pounding down seed and pounding down seed and hopefully get it to take. If I have to come in here with some annual rye, I will, but right now I'm just trying to keep it with the perennial. But it's not bad from far away. When you get up close, it's still really sparse. So I've had to deal with these armyworm moths. Um, I've been killing them off, killing them off. I actually decided to get an, a bug zapper, and I'm gonna put a bug zapper out here too. I'm gonna start zapping these things at night. I mean, I've got literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of armyworm moths in here. And I have to be real restrictive as far as what I put down because of the pond back here. So I got to be real careful with that. But this is looking pretty good. Again, I came out here with green chocker. This is now a cool season lawn. And I'm putting green chocker down on this, which is basically, it's a 712. It's an all fast release nitrogen. There's no slow release. You want to get that nitrogen to your cool season lawn. It'll store it as carbohydrates. It'll, it'll have root growth and it'll be better over the winter, and in the spring, it'll be a stronger germination.
just 900 feet up there, and about once a week we gotta blow all this crap off of it. Otherwise, the gravel looks bad, so he'll be there for a while. 50 pounds. Alright, so we're gonna go put we're gonna go put this in the field. Move on that field. I'm just gonna see more than come on. What kind of beads are in that? These be annual ryegrass that will germinate in days, in about three or four days. And then in the summertime, it'll survive all winter. In the summertime, when it heats up, it'll die off. So you can plant it on top of other grasses without it being a perennial. Annual versus perennial. Think perennial means permanent. P, perennial permanent. Annual every year. Whichever one works. Well, and it's nice too because you can probably make bread with it. <laughs> okay, so I uh, just finished putting seed out here, but I forgot to give someone a camera. <laughs> I'll have her send me a clip from her phone. <laughs> Anyway, so I went and put, I put almost a whole 50 pound, I put about 40 pounds of annual ryegrass on this area out here. Now I was thinking about, I was thinking about actually putting, going out here and doing ryegrass too, seeding ryegrass out here. But if I'm not going to have any rain right now, I might as well just wait. I mean, I guess I could do it. I'll, I'm going to wait until, a, I, when I see another rain coming in, I'll put some out there. Because then that way, that'll stay green. He cuts that, he and Jeff cut that once a week. That'll stay green the whole winter. And the deer will come in here, the deer will eat it. It'll support the clover. We'll put more clover seed out there. But one thing I do want to do, no, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait to see that until my chicory comes in. I think we're going to go up to the garden and work in the garden some, get rid of some of that old veggie crap. What, <laughs> what are you guys doing? Morning. Say no to crack. <laughs> So they're over here. I'm assuming they're throwing all the bad tomatoes in here and cracks in it. <laughs> and they and their shot is horrible. They suck. Oh look at that. Two points. Uh, Got the round. John's like, that's why I don't watch the NBA, WNBA. <laughs> ah, I got it in! Why do they have ESPN three for the WNBA? <laughs> there we go again. So they don't stop, do they, John? They go all the whole time. They don't stop talking the whole time. Look, John's over here looking. He's like, dude, they just don't stop. They just keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. So what am I doing now? Well, if you want to hang around, uh, my writers are still on strike, so I'm having to do all my writing. <laughs> uh, I'm going to jump in the UTV. i got to go fill my fish feeders. i got to go put out some supplemental feed for the deer. Uh, did I show you the cool picture? There's a really cool picture of a buck back there actually sleeping next to one of my feeders. I mean, he's bedded down. I mean, the camera kept going off every time he turned his head and I've got like 60 photos of him sitting there. It's actually, it's really cool. Let me put up one other cool picture. So behind the house, let me show you. So here's the house and then the barn is up here and there's a field back here. Almost every night, the, the deer, I have anywhere from four to 10 deer actually sleeping out there, bedded down, because there's a light on the barn and they feel real secure. It's open, the grass is short, they don't have to worry about ticks out there because it's dry, the light shines on them. It's just, it's, it's, this is a horrible picture I took with my iPhone, but what are you gonna do at night? It's really cool. Anyways, I digress. I've got some supplemental feed. I've got roasted, let me just show you what I've got for them. Whenever, um, whenever I put out a new camera or work a new stand, I always put out a bag of moonshine gold. If you haven't got any moonshine gold and you're going to a new place to hunt or putting out a new camera, put out a line of moonshine gold. It's the scent that draws them in. But what they really come in for to eat is these are roasted soybeans. And then this is big time. Big time has millet, sunflower seeds, soybeans, corn, and this one I believe is also cherry flavor. Man, they just love this stuff. Okay, so 
this is that fish food. This is the Purina Aquamax or whatever it is. Tiny, tiny, tiny pieces. And uh, it works so well in these feeders and these little fish just love it. Only problem I got is I got these stupid grass carp <laughs> that are getting big and the grass carp will come in here and kind of hijack my feeders. So I've already taken two or three of them out and I may end up taking the rest of them out. You can watch. They're crazy. Let's see if they're home first. They're here. So several months ago, I actually went down to this corner of the pond and I was like, what is that in the water? There was a dead deer in my water. I don't know if it got hung up and got stuck or what, but oh, there it goes. I always just bedded down. They're just bedded down in here. I was like, dude, is that deer dead? <laughs> I didn't know. Really good stuff. Roasted soybeans. So, got two bags of that. If you've never seen chicory seed, that's what chicory seed looks like. And now the long walk begins. It's a lonely world out here on the farm. I gotta put bug spray on my boots, hold on. This is, um, this is permethrin. We actually mix up ourselves. Hey, all right, so that's done. So now I'm gonna go hook up the irrigation sprinkler. Even though it's a little bit windy, I may, may even wait a little while. Let that wind die down a little bit, and then I'll turn the irrigation on. Let it run for let it run for a good hour. I dug down in this soil today, and after running this two or three times for almost an hour each time, this ground is still dry, still dry. So now I'm gonna put up a feed screen, and this feed screen will help me determine what is being browsed versus seeing a non-browsed portion. So I took one of our orchard screens, which is a circle, and I kind of pushed it down into oblong, and then I've got these holding spikes here. So whatever grows in here, this will be non-browsed, and then everything else will be browsed. So it'll kind of tell me how heavily they're in here. Plus I have a game camera up here, but I just want to do that and just see, because it is interesting to see the results. Wow, it really feels like fall out here today. So it's the next morning. 
it's actually a little bit chilly. I mean, it's 1130 and it's still barely 60 degrees out here <laughs> and it's windy. It feels, it feels chilly. So this is the fall guys. If you have a cool season grass, of course, you're going to be putting out nitrogen. Warm season people, let your lawn go to sleep. Basically, there's not a whole lot to do. Uh, I'm going to keep giving you guys updates. I'll show you. I'll walk you through this seeding process over here. I'll show you, keep you updated on that perennial, that perennial grass out there. We'll do some cool. We got a bunch of videos coming. One thing I do want to touch on is I always laughed at people that had a Apple Watch, you know, gadget, Mr. Gadget, talking to his watch. I think almost everyone that can, that's over 40, should have an Apple Watch. My wife and I talked about it. Oh, about a month ago, and she said, you know, she said, you really should get one being out here. You're out here by yourself, you're working, um, you're up in a tree stand, you're up over here. I mean, just all kinds of crazy stuff going on. And we have a rule here on the farm property. And the rule is, is if you're on the property, you have your phone with you. Well, my phone may be, it's always in my UTV. It may be 50 yards away from me, and I'm up doing tree work, or I'm in a tree stand, or up in the garden. As a good example... I'm working in the garden, I hear my phone ringing. So I have to go all the way out of the garden, all the way around, out to my UTV, and it's a spam call. So, <clears throat> I went ahead and ordered the new Apple Watch 9 series. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it down for you because there's a few things about the decision of your purchase that's real important. So I absolutely love this thing. I actually have a new band coming that's a protective band coming for it. But there's some really cool features on this watch. I'll give you one example, and that's the double tap feature. So if my hands are all dirty, I'm up there working in the garden or something, I get a phone call. Now this is cellular too, so I don't have to have my phone with me. I just, I look at it, it says I got a phone call. All I do is just go tap, tap. Your two fingers, tap, tap, and your phone, you'll answer your phone. When you're done with your conversation, two fingers, tap, tap, and it shuts down your phone. It really is a cool feature. But safety-wise, I fall down, I'm lying somewhere in the woods, I just have to hold that button in, just hold it and it'll call 911 for me. So there's all kinds of features that are really helpful on this thing. I don't use it for a lot of stuff, like there's the health stuff and all the kind. I just, main thing is safety, but there's certain things I think when you're ordering about the size of it that I'm gonna go over with you, and I hope to have that video out October 1st. So uh, like I said, I never thought I'd have one of these, but man, I've been using it now for about a week and I absolutely love this thing. That's about it. Uh, hit subscribe and uh, I got about 10 more videos that I got to get done. So, talk to you later. Die.